What's up Giants fans, back at it with another New York Giants video. And in this video, I want to recap the week one preseason game against the Detroit Lions. But before I get into that, folks, if you're new to the channel, your friendly neighborhood reminder to please check us out below on all of our social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Big Blue Avenue. We appreciate all of our viewers, listeners, and all of your support. So First and foremost, guys, I want to talk about the Giants defeating the Detroit Lions 14-3 to in week one of the preseason. This was a good overall showing by the Giants. Some things to clean up, some things to work on, but overall, I thought the Giants did a really good job running the football. It was a basic game plan, well done by Brian Dable. Calling plays, you know, being the offensive play caller this year is something that should definitely benefit the Giants offense. So I want to talk about some player standouts as well as the Drew Locke injury. Before I get into those player standouts, let's talk about Drew Locke, who unfortunately will miss some time due to a strained oblique and hip flexor injury. Um, I believe it occurred on the play where Josh Azudu got finessed beautifully and allowed a clean lane for Drew Locke to get smacked in the back side area. Um, Man, Josh Azudu's turned out to be a real bust of an NFL player. And unfortunately, it is part of the reason why Drew Locke got hurt. Um, I thought Drew Locke last night before the injury was a bit slow to step up in the pocket, wasn't as aware of the pressure as guys like Daniel Jones and Tommy DeVito. That could also be learning the Giants' new offensive scheme, which is a complicated scheme to learn. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Um, Drew Locke's stats were not great, just 17 total passing yards. I believe he went uh, four for 10 on the night. And then Drew Locke is a guy that probably is going to miss week one, if I had to guess, right? A hip injury is no joke. You definitely want to proceed with caution as far as that. One thing, though, I did learn about Drew Locke that I liked, um, he can really sling the ball. He can sling the ball. He could fit it into tight windows. Now, Malik Neighbors was on the field for 12 plays, was not targeted once. He ran eight routes in those 12 snaps he was in the game. Um, Drew Locke pretty much had the Isaiah Hodgins vision, the Allen Robinson, Daniel Bellinger. Um, Locke did throw one interception trying to fit a tight squeeze in to Isaiah Hodgins, and then the Lions defense just snagged it. But overall, um, Drew Locke, I'm, I, I hope – he recovers, and hopefully we can see some more of him in the future. So Tommy DeVito enters the game. The Giants do a really good job running the football, a much more smooth offense. The Giants controlled the line of scrimmage, which is part of the reason why I think Big Blue won this football game. Uh, Tyrone Tracy Jr. and Eric Ray both ran the ball beautifully. Uh, Turbo Miller was awesome as well. I was very excited to see him. Eric Ray, of course, had that 48-yard touchdown run. He had, I believe, 98 total yards from scrimmage. So Eric Ray was definitely the player of the game for Big Blue. was definitely happy about that. Um, he was also really good on the receiving end as well. He made a nice catch on a third down play from Tommy DeVito. Um, again, who looked crisp. He looked clean. Tommy DeVito is squeaky clean. That's why New York loves him. Definitely impressed by Tommy Cutlets, uh, his final stat numbers for that game, DeVito went 8 of 15 for 92 yards, sacked just once. DeVito also had four rushes for two yards. Again, Eric Gray, definitely the player of this game, although I will say Dante Miller Turbo had 63 rushing yards on just 12 carries. Each of the Giants' three running backs in this game averaged over five yards per carry. A lot of credit to the offensive line across the board. Starting on the line, we saw Azudu at left tackle, Jay Kubis at left guard, Austin Schlotman at center, Aaron Stinney at right guard, and then Joshua Miles at right tackle. Overall, this was not a bad unit. Out of this unit, I think three of those guys make the roster in Schlotman, Stinney, and Azudu. Jay Kubis, impressive UDFA out of North Dakota State, made a couple of good blocks to open up some holes. Um, Joshua Miles, I've been very impressed by in this training camp. It was definitely interesting to see. Um, also want to talk about the defense and how they controlled the line of scrimmage. Um, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. 
Ryder Anderson looked really, really good. Uh, Boogie Basham had a sack as well with four tackles and two passes defended. I think Boogie Basham has solidified himself as that fourth edge right now for the Giants, a defense that logged four sacks against quarterbacks Nate Sudfeld and Hendon Hooker, respectfully, on Thursday night. Boogie Basham was good. Deontay Johnson is another player that I really like. He had a sack. He had a good tackle on a third and short. He's quick. He's sideline a sideline guy. Um, Darian Beavers is another guy who looked good as well. Five tackles with one in the backfield. A guy who, you know, last offseason was coming back from the ACL. He tore as a rookie. He didn't make the roster in 23. Spent the whole year on the practice squad. He's a feel-good story. I'm excited to see what he can do in these remaining two preseason games. Uh, the other two sacks outside of Boogie and Johnson came from Elijah Chapman and Benton Whitley. Whitley had, I believe he had one penalty. Um, I don't think Whitley makes the team, nor does Chapman, but Chapman was a guy that was invited to rookie minicamp and really, really impressed. So the Giants wound up signing him to the 90-man roster. And overall, you saw guys like Jordan Riley um, containing the line of scrimmage, which is very, very encouraging to see. I also want to shout out UDFA DT out of Oregon, Casey Rogers, a guy who was supposed to play lacrosse going into college. He almost went to Syracuse, and what do you know? Rogers shined last night, two passes defended, also had a couple stops. So that's pretty much the line of scrimmage. Um, as far as Eric Gray and Tyrone Tracy Jr., Tracy Jr. constantly found the hole. Gray was just really, really awesome with Gray being a year ahead of Tracy and flashing last night. I think Gray definitely has the edge for running back two right now, but this is going to be a battle that comes down to the third preseason game. Um, it'll be very interesting to see who solidifies that role behind Devin Singletary. However, I do think all three running backs will be used this season. And I do think another thing that I like is they're not using Eric Gray on kickoffs anymore. They're having him just run the football and catch the football out of the backfield. Those jobs are for Gunnar Olszewski and Isaiah McKenzie. I know Tracy took um, was back there a couple times, but right now the biggest roster battle seems to be Gunnar Olszewski and Isaiah McKenzie for wide receiver six. Olszewski got the start. Um, I think his stock went up last night. I think Isaiah McKenzie's stock went down. Despite the good kickoff return to – open up the game. He did fumble the football. He did recover it, but um, Olszewski is a little bit more sure-handed, and he was on the team last year. Despite McKenzie being a Brian Dable favorite, I think Gunner has the ability to return both kicks and punts, and Gunner could even catch a pass here and there if you ask him to. So definitely intrigued to see that battle. Special teams-wise, I thought Miles Boykin did well too, definitely fighting with guys like Hodgins for a roster spot. Um, made a good tackle on the opening punt of the game from Jamie Gillen. Um, I believe he jarred the ball loose from the punt returner, so Miles Boykin is definitely a fun, fun story. Um, other players who had their stock go up, Deontay Banks was really the only starter that played in this game. Um, on defense, at least, Cordell Flott was supposed to play but had an injury issue. Drew Phillips, who's battling for the nickel slot job, really, really – shined he got in the backfield on a play for a tfl i liked what i saw from drew phillips um yeah so stock up definitely gonna say uh deontay johnson deontay banks drew phillips gunner olszewski tyrone tracy eric gray turbo miller um you name it and i think we saw the new look giants very very physical they control the line of scrimmage they only gave up three points the whole game trey herndon had a pick but lost the ball on defense. So Herndon falls in that in-between stage. I don't think he helped his case all that much, but the Giants certainly are looking for a veteran in the cornerback room. And with Jalen Mills on pup, I think Trey Herndon might be the guy that they look to. You know, the Giants didn't dress certain players. They didn't dress Nick McLeod. They didn't dress Carter Coughlin. Uh, apparently these guys are shoe-ins to make the roster right now. You know, we saw a lot of Darius Muisau, the sixth-round draft pick out of UCLA, and I thought he played well. I really, really did. I was definitely excited to see that. Um, stock down, I mentioned Isaiah McKenzie, Drew Locke, Josh Azudu, Marcus McKeithen. McKeithen didn't get in until late in the game in the fourth quarter. Uh, Matt Nelson had a few good plays, but 
Right now, he's buried on the depth chart for offensive tackle, despite Evan Neal being on pup. Um, and then it's going to be interesting to see what the Giants do because they do need a third quarterback right now with Drew Locke being out. Obviously, the veto will be QB2 behind Daniel Jones. And for QB3, you might be looking at guys they brought in last season, like a Matt Barkley or a Jacob Eason, who were both on the market, E.T. Perry, right? These are guys that you could definitely consider bringing in for another look and get some preseason reps, right? Eason and Barkley, two veterans who have been around for a while. I imagine they go with Matt Barkley before Jacob Eason. So I do think Matt Barkley will be signed for this preseason um, to play behind Jones and DeVito with Drew Locke, unfortunately, being hurt. So, folks, stay tuned. I appreciate you all watching this video. The New York football giants, I think, are on the right track. No major injuries of note outside of Drew Locke. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section below. Do you agree with my stock up and stock down players? Do you think the Giants look more physical at the line of scrimmage? I want to hear your thoughts and your questions for me. And if you disagree, that's okay too. That's why we are here to talk it out and share our best ideas and opinions on our beloved New York football Giants. Follow us on social media below, on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And without further ado, let's go big.